Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Thomas Hampson. This is Thursdays with Thomas on iDodger Live, the place where classical music happens. Uh, and we have a, a wonderful, well, I hate to word the show. We have a, I have a wonderful guest this evening, and we're going to have a wonderful conversation. And I know there's an awful lot of fans of this young man that have tuned in already, and we have some questions from you and all that. And without further ado, before much more talking about, about this series, I just want to, this person you're seeing on your screen, you know, probably be better than even I. Philip Jaruski, that's my first question. Jaruski or Jaruski, or how do you say your name? Oh, it's a Russian name, but it's, we can get the French pronunciation. It's Jaruski, yes. Jaruski. All right. Jaruski, Philip, yes. it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I, I, let me say right away before I before I welcome you, one of the really fun things about this series that's now been going on for almost a year. I mean, in March, it'll be a year born of the COVID, and I guess we're still staying at COVID. Uh, but it was more than that. Uh, Idadro.com, the most extensive, deep uh, streaming platform for classical music, built for classical musicians and classical music lovers by classical musicians. This is the most amazing thing. The user interface is just a wonderful uh, user-friendly experience. And of course, we were always talking about when can we go to video? And when the pandemic hit and everyone was so desperate to find some way of letting people have a connection to one another, much less music and, and the arts and the artists, we said, let's let's just start this series. And Idadjo Live was born. Uh, various programs, as much, you know, I, Ivan Fischer talking about Mahler symphonies and and uh, Kirill Gerstein talking about Bach and Busoni and so forth. I did it. I have a Tuesday night uh, show on on uh, song, but this Thursday night was getting ready for the weekend. And my idea was to have a place where I could invite people that I know or I even don't know to have a glass of wine and talk about their lives. And 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 I must say, I'm confessing, this has been one of my greatest pleasures because I've I've been able to meet colleagues in various Fox, as we call them, in various walks of classical music life and professions that I may not have been able to meet or been uh, had any reason to meet, from guitarists to flautists to conductors to presenters. And tonight, my dear colleague, Philip, <laughs> I, I, we, we know one another. We know each other's work. I know certainly of more course. of you, but 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 I'm not sure. We were, we were trying to fantasize what we might sing together, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. But it's just wonderful to meet you and have oh, this wonderful conversation. Too. Welcome, welcome, it's a welcome. It's sur surrealistic, you know, when I, I knew that I would <laughs> chat with you like this. It was such a pleasure. I'm very, very happy to meet you like this. And of course, hello to everybody who is connected tonight. Uh, and I'm not in Paris. I am in, I think we are not that far each to each other. I am in <laughs> yeah, Savoy, exactly. France. And uh, You're I in tried Savoy. I tried to take one one week holidays <laughs> in the snow. Oh, only one? <laughs> only one, yes. Uh, just probably before the last lockdown in France, we are afraid that next week will be more difficult. Yes. Yes, I think, well, I'm in southern Austria uh, uh, and in the Steiermark, in, in Styria to be exact. Um, and Austria is apparently going to open a bit next week. Um, but as they announced that, there were, there were a lot of very friendly warnings that people better behave or they will have to shut it back down. Um, and, and, right, and rightfully so. It's, it's all about emergency preparations and, and help to people. And, and you know, I, I hope everyone watching this across the world takes this pandemic seriously and wears the masks and behaves. And we're only going to get through this if we get through it together. Uh, and there's no so use close. complaining and being crazy about it. Uh, it is a it is a massively contagious, unpleasant disease. Hopefully, the first thing we can do is get the death rate down. Um, but I mean, this isn't a show about that. Um, but we have some questions about that, and of course, Already. the COVID. Okay. The, well, yes, yeah. the COVID the COVID period uh, is for our public. Is of course, you know, what do we do as musicians? What yes. what are, what are our lives like? What and I guess we can go right. We have a. How are you keeping your beautiful voice in good order during the lockdown? Yes, that, I remember. For during the first lockdown, um, I didn't sing that much. I, I tried to to take a break. Yeah. Uh, you know better than everybody how 
uh, difficult can be the rhythm of a, of a singer sometimes. You are, you yes. are running, you are trying to learn scores very quickly, you are traveling. And then, of course, I don't want to say that I was sad to, about all the, the constellations, but I tried to say, okay, let's have a, a break. And uh, I played a lot the piano and the violin. Uh, and, I'm, I'm uh, jealous. <laughs> and uh, I would love to play the violin. You play the violin. Yes, I was first oh. violinist, and uh, of course, I play also <laughs> a lot the piano. And uh, you know, I just realized that it's just fantastic to have music in your life. You know, it's such a nice company. You don't see uh, the day passing. You know, you spend two hours to the piano, Beethoven, Chopin. You take the violin. Uh, but after that, after two, three months, and still now, uh, I have the same teacher for more than 23 ah. years. <clears throat> she gave wow. me my first lesson, and uh, we decided to to uh, rebuild. You can say probably you did that in your yes, life. Yes, absolutely. And uh, first, I started to sing in Zoom like this with her, uh, three hours by week. And then we started to try to make a, a deeper work on the voice. And uh, now this starting to be frustrating because uh, I would like to try that on stage, these new <laughs> sensations. Um, we try to really to make the, the voice, you know, my voice is very clear, but uh, try to find a, a, a richer palette of color, you know, something oh. more mezzo-soprano uh, to to really to to be able for example in the future to approach more uh, lower pieces you know i have I to going to... Alto in a in few months normally in lausanne i i hope it will, it will stay i hope yes but uh, yeah. then um i first i stopped to sing and after little by little i try to to rebuild the technique what I was going to say, in, in, in you're looking at actually repertoire, because, or did you feel that your voice needed to be re reshaped? Forget about COVID. It just you yes. needed to, you know, the gears the gears were starting to work differently. Yes, I think so. You you know that too. The voice is changing a lot with your body, with your age. Uh, I remember when I was with your young, age, of course. Yes, when I was young, when I was Girl. 25, uh, I was making very easily the coloraturas, for example. I was really making that super quickly. Now I'm almost 43, and the coloraturas <laughs> need, need, need to be worked a little bit more, you know, because the voice is a, a bit larger, and then I need to work on that to train and to keep the flexibility <laughs> also. Of course, when you are 25, sometimes you just sing and it works. And then now I well, need to yeah. really know exactly what I need to do to get the sound. And um, of course, what was difficult for me is that I'm a counter tenor, but I'm not a, such a very high sopranist, but I'm not an alto. And uh, I was always bet between two middle, two, two ranges. And it was difficult yeah, for me to yeah. find uh, opera <clears throat> productions. You know, I sang a lot Sesto in Giulio Cesare because it was a perfect range for me. But um, that's why, for example, I'm dreaming to sing Rinaldo for 20 years. And maybe you've never I'm sung there. Rinaldo. Oh, it's beautiful. But it's, ask, it's yeah. asking me more, more <clears throat> to work more on the, on, the, on the middle range. Yeah. I have to confess, I, 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 I know the repertoire, but I don't know what your repertoire in specificity. Interesting, you mentioned Julius Caesar. You know, back in the day, as we say, and I was very close to Nicholas Hanencourt, I actually sang as a baritone Julius Caesar. Uh, yeah, I alternated. Nice. I alternated with Ben Ben Luxon, and I, I remember that obviously quite well. And I know what you mean about the coloratura. All I can say is, when you get to my age, coloratura is a dirty word. <laughs> 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 it's you know, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> okay, but in I, fact, I, I, my, my risky world. world. Yeah. But my voice teacher, you know, my voice teacher lived to be a hundred years old. Uh, I studied with a lot of people, but my last one, Horst Gunther, and he was always very adamant as I went into, as a baritone, into, heavy, into a little bit heavier repertoire and pushed on the envelope. He said, fine, but you must come back to song and you must come back to coloratura. 
if yes. you can't if you can't sing Bach after you've done Mandrika, you shouldn't sing Mandrika. Yeah, I always, you know, uh, to 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 confess you something, I always was very afraid mm -hmm. to sing Bach. Uh, I think for me, Bach, it's two types of musicians. You have people who are just very comfortable from the very beginning with Bach. <clears throat> You know, right, and right. And they, they record Bach from the very beginning, and it was not my case. I, I just made two cantatas, recorded two cantatas, and uh, I remember you probably sang that yeah, I recorded Isha Genuk, and that was very, very, very. I, I, I the first first phrase I wanted to record it again and again, and. Um, and it's it's not easy. Of course, I love Bach like all the musicians, but uh, uh, it's still I, no, no. I still think it is difficult really for me. I, I get that. Look, before we go too much farther, I actually want to, because <clears throat> I think we have a lot of your friends online tonight, uh -huh. uh, and that's very exciting. Um, but we also have people that just like to follow these interviews and get to know new people. So right. there might be some people that might not know you so well. Where did you grow up? When did you come to music? Was your family musical? Are your brothers and sisters musical? Or, I mean, as much as you want to tell us, but where you went to school, how did, how did you start become uh, Philippe Jaruski? Yeah, um, I've been very lucky. Actually, uh, my first passion was not music. I was drawing a lot and painting a lot ah. when I was a child. And um, it's uh, uh, in college in France, when I was 10 years old, uh, we, had, we, we have in France, we have this one hour by week of uh, music <laughs> lessons. Right. Um, me, uh, you learn the flute and you learn a bit the music. And uh, I had a fantastic teacher and uh, he made me sing. And he said to my parents, my parents, they are not musicians. And uh, he said to them, I think Philippe should start music. And uh, I started the violin quite late, actually, because I was 11 years old. And uh, it, was, it was a shock. I, I really, really, maybe it was a bit late, but I really decided to do music. And uh, I was really discovering all the repertoire. And uh, I was a big fan. When I was a teenager, I was listening to Shostakovich all the time. And, uh, and I, after I played the piano, and uh, at the age of 18, um, I just went to a concert of uh, a French countertenor, uh, Fabrice Di Falco, in a church in Paris. And he was singing the most famous arias by Farinelli, Handel. And then I was in shock. I was totally hypnotized by this voice. That was my first contact with a countertenor. And uh, in the same time, I had this little voice in my head uh, telling me, you can do that. Uh, you can sing like this, probably because I was. Had, you, had you sung before? Had but you sung in the choir? Did you sing? Did you sing as a child? Not really. No, no, no. I didn't sing in a in a choir, but I like to sing like this sometimes in singing in my shower, let's say, and, um, <clears throat> and that's that's how I I met his teacher Nicole Fania, who is still my teacher 23 years after and wow. um, and she said it, to me when i was 18 she said to me you have a very nice tiny voice you are quite a good musician but i'm not sure you can become a counter tenor and i said to her you have to believe me i will become a counter tenor and i thought i became a counter tenor but uh, like i could feel that with working on my voice i could manage that but you probably know that also i i really uh, this is the pleasure uh, the pleasure to sing uh, uh, i realized uh, how much I, I i had much more pleasure singing than playing the violin i was very sad uh, everybody was telling me that was not good enough technically and yeah. uh, suddenly i I, mm -hmm. I realized that singing was much more um, natural for me in a way so did you always sing as a counter tenor Yes, uh, we, we tried the both voices. I have a terrible baritone voice. <laughs> I have one octave. Uh, and then we <laughs> still try to work on it because sometimes, you know, as a concert, you know, you need to use the chest yes, voice. Yes, yes, the low notes, And it was always quite difficult for me to, to pass. Yes. Um, and um, In what direction? That, 
from the very beginning, the the head. But was it was more difficult to go down, come down, and go back up, or was it as a baritone to go into that into that higher register? It was always well, difficult for me to go in baritone the voice. The, yeah, uh, and I know counter tenors who are more tenor, and and then can pass easily because yes. they have more range. And to choose it. Can, can you for us explain, maybe a lot of people don't actually understand the phenomenon of a countertenor. And uh, when we talk about men singing in the treble voice, of course, the, the ancient word is castrati. And, and a lot of the repertoire you, you, you have recorded and are famous for were, were, was made very famous by these extraordinary human beings, the castrati of a, of a tradition uh, I think as men, we we're probably glad that tradition is over. It, it always makes me a little that's, uneasy that's to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but I mean, you know, and of course the most famous story, I remember what, I don't know, 10 years or 20 years ago or 12 years ago when the, the Farinelli thing came out. And of course it was a fantastic film and we were all mesmerized by this thing. Were you, were you part of that project? The Farinelli no, project? actually Did when we, I, when, when the, the movie was released, I was uh, 17 and I was at the college. Uh -huh. And I remember that's that's funny because at the period at this period I was a violinist and I was mostly playing uh. Shostakovich, Tchaikovsky, Brahms. And, and this I didn't heard, and this didn't and, and this and this wasn't what made you want to be tenor. Actually, no. And actually when uh -huh. I, I heard the music of the movie, I thought it was boring. And that's curious because <laughs> Because two, three years after I was, I was singing uh, Carasposa, Alto Jove, all these beautiful arias, then, you know, I changed totally my, my mind, discovering Well, I voice. mean, but as a violinist, you're listening to Shostakovich all day. Of exactly. course, you're going to be somewhat, you're going to sort of, why do I have to listen to this pure music? Oh, that's very interesting. But tell us about, tell us about, I asked you a question. Tell us about the development of the countertenor, what it means and how it's built. Uh, and, and what relationship do you have to the castrati repertoire of, that we yes. identify? Or much less, the, it, it also, because it's also part of, of the limit, limitation of women being able to, uh, allowed to sing on stage. So a lot of the roles were sung by men. It's a, I mean, it's a very complex history, if you could help us I through think, that. Yes, I think we can, we can talk about two periods. Of course, you have the first English school with Alfred Deller, James Bowman, that yeah. was after the Second World War, and there, there was, it was a big, uh, big discovery of of this voice, and uh, maybe they were more singing uh, like Purcell, Dowland, a little bit less opera music, and yes. uh, probably because also, mostly we were, we were playing uh, only the same five operas, like Monteverdi Orfeo. Uh, Giulio Cesare we talked about, and um, that's all. After you have this second generation, I would say Andrea Scholl, David Daniels. Uh, David Daniels was probably did a lot for contertenors to open the repertory. He sang Berlioz, he sang French songs, Schubert, and and the the, the, the wonderful uh, German countertenor. Um, yes, Kowalski. Yes, you're, Kowalski. Um, Jürgen, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, it's a great guy. I, I really love him. And he was, and his voice was very strong, wasn't it? Very strong. He sang, uh, he sang yeah. uh, Mitri, Farnace in Mitridate by Mozart. And, um, and I, I'm taking part of this, let's say, third generation. Uh, we just mm -hmm. enjoyed the explosion about uh, Baroque opera. For example, um, I started my career with a lot of Vivaldi operas that nobody knew about before. Uh, right. And with this Vivaldi edition, and of course with the beautiful uh, album from Cecilia Bartoli, we were discovering that Vivaldi was also a great opera composer. And yeah. now, uh, now we are more discovering the Napolitan music, Porpora, as uh, uh, Leonardo Vinci. Uh, I, I participated, participated to this production with seven countertenors. This is crazy. And wow. uh, of course, now <clears throat> we have a, much more uh, different types of countertenors. And uh, do you and think that we'll, we'll, maybe once, once we will have a countertenor, we will sing the Queen of the Night? Who knows? <laughs> well, I've, <laughs> but were there always countertenors? 
even even in the castrati, or was that this is the repertoire yes. of the castrati? But then after the castrati, which is going to be in the 19th century, were there always countertenors? Not really. I think we know that uh, there were there were some countertenors even during the the period of the castrati, but they were the real stars, and that's why yeah. that's why when we are uh, singing the castrato repertoire, we we have to stay very realistic and humble because we know particularly when they were breathing, uh, yeah. it was almost limitless. That was probably the biggest difference between a normal singer and a castrato. They have a huge yeah. breath. And probably yeah. you, we know as singers that when you breathe, this is the most dangerous, dan dangerous moment because it can change your position. It's a moment, yes. dangerous moment. Then, of course, this capacity to to support long phrases without breathing, uh, it was probably uh, in, an incredible impact on the audience. And then we see that in the Farinelli movie when um, you see this woman is, is vanishing because she's suffocating because Farinelli yeah. is not taking a breath. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes people, they are impressed because I take uh, the, the beginning of Alto Jove, this mesa, this famous mesa di voce, when they were making a note, making a crescendo and a decrescendo, right. and and they are impressed <clears> by <throat> me. But I say you can imagine that a, a castrato was taking this note three times more than me, and that was probably unbelievable. Then um, I probably, as a concertiner, of course, I developed uh, a technique to sometimes to to not breathe and sometimes to breathe right. quickly and to make some arrangements, you know? Sometimes I say my job is also to, to lie a bit, you know, then to take a breath, <laughs> one breath more. And, uh, but you have to stay realistic. It was probably, um, I think each concertino has his own imagination about how was sounding Farinelli or Caffarelli, Senesino. We, we try to imagine and maybe to, adapt a little bit the voice to this idea. Yes, yes, but yes. But we yeah. never reach that. Yeah, that's fascinating. I want to see what, so uh, did you, you grew up in Paris? Yeah, uh, in the suburb, uh, in the suburbs of Paris, yes, in Sartreville. Right. And um, right. My, my, my parents were very supporting me because they didn't know about classical music um, they, they realized quite quickly that if I had to try and, um, and I had this chance to discover my voice uh, at the age of 18, uh, which is quite, wow. quite young for a singer, you know. And, uh, and, and, and this teacher you found, she already knew about training countertenors? Yes, uh, she trained uh, Gérard Laine, a famous French countertenor. Wow. And uh, she trained a lot of uh, Baroque singers like uh, Véronique Jans. Or, um, and uh, she knew about, and I, I, I always thought that was quite good for a concertinor to get um, a female teacher there because yeah. she always tried to get to, that I get the same technique than her, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. uh, she never considered that a, a, a concertinor is a bit weird, you know? She tried always to get um, a, re a real uh, lyrical technique. And I think this is the right. key of this new generation. You know, if you hear like Max Amadeo, yeah. Chantic, Franco Fagioli, all these very operatic concertinos, they, they sing like bel canto, they yeah. don't sing like Baroque, like in the past. They are very, they have lyrical voices. Many years ago, I used to sing the Messiah a lot. And I sang often with Paul Eswood. Oh, great. Did you ever, did you have a wonderful singer, you know, yeah, and, and we were, and I was asking him then some questions and, 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 uh, and, and, and about how it works in it. And it, cause he spoke in a very baritone kind of voice and he said, Oh no, no, you, you develop this kind of technique. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> so he was singing the alto arias, you know, he was despised. Right. The, ah, and I, he, he was a big and I sang like, through. He, has yeah. a, he, has, he had a very clear voice. Yeah. And I, I remember, yes. I, I like that. Yeah, but it was it was unbelievable. So I, I played with it, and he, and he just looked at me. and He said, "No, 
no, 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 no. So I went back. Look, the rest of that question that I asked you before, <laughs> it's very sweet. She asked you about the lockdown. Uh, this is, um, I, well, I won't embarrass anybody. This is a, a woman from England. Do you yes. have a soundproof studio and do you have very understanding neighbors? Then she writes, lucky ah. them, lucky them. And then she says, and how do you motivate yourself to keep singing under these circumstances? Now, that sounds like a, a very legitimate question from England, which is having one of the worst yes. times of everybody. But never mind, it's a good question. Hello. Uh, the first question is about uh, the passions well, of well, I think. I, <laughs> yeah, well, I think she's, she's curious where you get to sing and work. And if you're at home, do you have a place yes. you can soundproof? Or do the people just put up with it? Then most normally when I'm uh, traveling a lot, when I have a lot of concerts, of course, I'm, I'm not singing that, that a lot uh, in my place in Paris. But exactly. uh, of course, this last year, <clears throat> I had to sing a little bit more. Uh, I have the change. I moved uh, in a beautiful, small private house uh, in Paris. Then it's easier than a, an apartment. Then uh, for the moment, nobody complained <laughs> since two years. Um, and uh, for to keep uh, the motivation, as I said before, um, um, I stopped for a few months, and now I I uh, I have some Zoom session with my teacher. And um, I think, as a singer, as an artist, you probably agree with me. You you need to always have the feeling that you can still progress on something. Uh, Absolutely. On a Absolutely. Uh, about one language. Uh, about uh, how do you feel and um, you cannot stop to work uh, I don't believe that and uh, and that's how I keep the motivation I... because when I, I have one hour with my teacher it's like I work 10, ten hours alone with alone without her that's how I, I and she knows it's a wonderful well. answer and I, and I hope we have some what well. I hope we have some wonderful students watching this as well, because what you're saying is what, what we all try and encourage our young colleagues. I'm, it always bothers me on two, two levels when I, when I talk to young people and I, I'm giving a class and I say, now, what are you doing? Are you still studying? He says, no, I'm finished with my studies. Yeah. <laughs> it, and I, it bothers me because you went, well, no, actually, you're never finished with your studies. And they agree. They know that. But what they're trying to say is they're done with school. But then what's really what the other side that bothers me is that it means that, you know, I'm finished with conservatoire and I'm not working. So I've fallen into this hole. And ergo, I'm very glad to be taking a master class because I need to keep singing and find myself before I can maybe get some employment. So, you know, we've this 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 for singers this progressive ladder of development yes. that, that should be pre-professional, semi-professional, professional, young professional and developing has really gotten quite broken in our time uh, and certainly in my so. career. And it breaks and my you know, heart. When you, when you sing a lot, you just need help. You yeah. just need help. You just need, you. exactly. Uh, for example, I, some, I discovered <clears> the <throat> massages sometimes also. I need massages to just put the tension out and rebuild also the sensations because if your body yeah. is starting to be too tense, you don't feel anymore uh, yeah. the breathe the sensations. Then it's true that um, I think that sometimes uh, we want we want to know we, we want we want to be sure I know how to sing. But I I, I see with my true. teacher it depends about what I'm singing. If I'm singing a Schubert song, if I'm singing an opera an aria by Handel, sometimes. She she's finding different solutions, and sometimes can be the contrary technically. And uh, she had very good ears, and I trust her at one hundred percent. And um, and sometimes you don't have to trust your ears yourself. That can be dangerous to listen to yourself too much. I agree. I think that singers should trust more the feeling of their voice than than yeah. this hissing of the voice. You know, for uh, me and... that was the the most difficult thing because. I'm more intellectual, you know, and it, it needed for me 10, 15 years to become more physical and just mm. to trust my sensations more than the results. Because if you listen to the results, it's finished for after. It's too late. <laughs> That's a very good point. Are you, are you, do you do yoga or athletic? You're on a week vacation and you can't ski. Would you, if you could ski, if they allowed you to ski, are you a skier? Is this what you like no, to do? I, uh, 
this is the the most the, the the biggest regret of my life. I'm not a sportive guy at all, and um, I regret that because you know that better than me when you do opera. It's sometimes it's very physical. You know, even now with the modern staging, you have to dance, you have to do thousands of things, and um, I regret that. Uh, but I, I do more shiatsu massages, energetic massages. Bravo. And, uh, you know, I will start to conduct. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I will conduct my first opera next year. Oh, and my it's goodness. Probably, it's probably even more physical to conduct for four, four hours. And then maybe yeah. I will start to, to get some training, just becoming a conductor finally. I Are you know. left-handed? No, I did that because I don't know. No, I'm right-handed. Yeah. Ah, okay, because <laughs> I've I've worked with left-handed conductors, and it and it oh. takes you have to. It's quite interesting. You have to sort of get to new. It's a new perspective. 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 Let me look. I have another. Let's see. I have a, a question from Mexico. Your right. last album, La Vanita del Mondo, is dedicated to the Italian oratorio religious music. What does it mean for you, the spirituality in this music, far beyond the religious context? Yes. That's a very you personal know, question. I always, you know, as an artist, you have to know what you do the best, what you do a little bit less interesting. And it's true that I never had a very dramatic temperament. And uh, sometimes I feel the limit of my voice more in big dramatic operas. And... Um, it's true that people sometimes they like a lot my voice when I sing church music, like uh, Motetto mm. by Vivaldi, Stabat Mater, mm. and Dominus. Uh, I have a connection with this style, and um, I never approached the oratorio style, which is a bit an operatic church music, we would yes. say. And right. uh, what I like in this music is the way that some composers like Handel, Scarlatti, uh, Caldara, who was a big master of this music, uh, the way they write is maybe a little bit less virtuosic, but uh, with a more dialogue with the orchestra. Um, and sometimes people, they ask me, uh, what, is, what do you change when you sing opera or when you, you sing sacred music? I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not believing in God, but I'm always trying to get this feeling that uh, I'm in front of something which is bigger than me. Uh, there is this sense of humility. Uh, you know, when you, you sing opera, it's much more narcissistic. You are suffering, you are screaming, you are, you are, you are f full in love, you are desperate. Uh, of course, more in the oratorial style, you're just interpreting sometimes a mm. saint. Uh, right. Then you try to, you know, it's like when you sing Orfeo by Gluck you try to find a little different color and the music is beautiful. Most of the time, sometimes I feel that the oratorio arias, um, this oratorio probably most of the composers, they were believing in God and then they were trying to, to find a, a more concentrate uh, style, something which is less about uh, impress people, but more in yes, telling yes. something very precise. And um, I, I really wanted yes. to make this album for that. And uh, yeah. and La Vanita del Mondo was a good title also, particularly at this time when we are discovering. Yes, but I love the title La Vanita del Mondo, but you're talking about this, this existence of something greater than yourself. And to me, that's the essential question, isn't it? I think that's, and that answers the question very beautifully. I mean, yeah. God is an extremely complex, God is written in so many different ways for so many different people. Yes, but in a way, if it, I think, if it, if, I, if, hmm? yeah, if you sing, um, probably you, probably a leader songs by Schubert, you get also the same feeling of humility, you know? Of I course. Think you, you, you just hear to, and of course, in opera, it can be a bit more show off, of course. But I like both of yeah. them. But, but um, in Bach, I think each note of Bach, you, you have to feel this humility that you sing. Yes, something. without question. 
it, just, it's very devout, very devout music. Look, Philip, what I want to do with our with our person, I'm going to do a little. Yeah. I love to do screen sharing every time, ah, and yes. I'm going to put on this right. Um, and and fa actually, actually, before I do that, I'm going to come back out. Sorry. Um, one of the reasons we're having a conversation here tonight uh, with Idajo uh, in, is is that you have done a global concert hall. And ladies and gentlemen, the way Idajo is structured, the first was this fantastic database and, and huge depth of repertoire in the classical idiom, over 20,000 composers online. I didn't even know there were 20,000 classical composers. Uh, and, f and for a while at the beginning of this of this series, I used to do a, a can we try and, and surprise one another, try and find, go through the database and find a name you've never heard about and learn something. And that was quite fun for a while. But anyway, with the with the uh, Idanjo live series and this interviews and, and education aspect and different aspects of music. And then in June, uh, the Idanjo platform launched a really world-changing uh, event in classical music called the Global Concert Hall. And the idea behind the Global Concert Hall was to bring the artist and the public as quickly and as close together without middlemen and make, give and provide a platform that live music, even if it is made in a digital atmosphere, but live music like a live program could be available. We, we're, we're not keeping a catalog of things. The, the artists themselves can decide how long they want it to stay online or if it's an organization. And of course, it's everybody from, from uh, you know, the Vienna Philharmonic to the Berlin Philharmonic to, to the, the LSO and soloists and Mari Samuelson and Philip Jaruski and Miros, the fantastic guitarist. Um, but but the, the, the thing is, it's like a concert series and that if you missed the concert series, you, there's a slight forgiving period of time and that, and that your concert can be available. And your concert, you did this wonderful um, uh, concert on the 29th of January, and it was called uh, Inspiration. And it was you with the Le Concert de la Loge, which we do want to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, it is still available for another couple of days. You really should go see it. In fact, that's the first thing I want to take you to for a very private reason. So we're going to do a screen share. Uh, and I've checked all my boxes here and I need to find, yes, here we are. Actually, the first thing we're going to see is Mr. Jaruski in your wonderful Warner Classics splash page. Uh, is, are you seeing that? Is it just that? Yes, I see that. It's Wonderful. a beautiful Photoshop picture. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, it's you a have picture like, by a great photographer called Simon Fuller. Maybe you know him. Oh he's yes, a he's a he's a fantastic. Okay, yeah, so fantastic um, photographer. so if we go down here. We have some one of this is this is on the Warner Classics who owns now Erato like they own EMI yes. as well. Uh, I know that very well because all my Teldec went over there and all my EMI and it's oh, yes, wonderful. True. Yeah. And and you must be working with Alain Soron, no? Yes, he's still there. Yeah, he's a great, oh, great, the very great and old, wonderful old friend. Uh, just the, the, the paradigm of, of classical music. God bless him. You see him again. He has my been love. a very, very important in France for, for classical music. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you can see here all sorts of things. And then I pulled out. Then if you go up here, you can see his menu and so on. But the, one of the menus was was uh, this. There's still that Photoshop picture, which I put not too much on Photoshop. <laughs> but this, are, this is news. I, I love this. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. So, Yaruski's, Yaruski's expressiveness is irresistible. You don't need any more critiques. You just leave that. You can, and that's the title of your of your memoirs, BBC <laughs> Magazine. He's he squeezes maximum nuance from each word. That's very British. Sighing, languishing, lamenting <laughs> with utter conviction. I would I would get rid of that. I would just keep that one. I love that. Yuriski's expressiveness is irresistible, and that is very very true. Now moving on here, this is the page. I pulled this up so I could talk about it a little bit. Tell me about the Le Concert de la Loge. The group. Yes, um, I know uh, Julien Chauvin, who is the who is a great violinist, and now is conducting this beautiful ensemble. I know him for for twenty years now, and uh, he created um, like uh, more than five years ago this uh, beautiful ensemble. Uh, they play baroque music, but also a lot of classical music, like Haydn, Mozart. Right. Uh, and I, I really love to work with them and with Julien because everything is very classy, clear, uh, without too much special effects. Um, 
Music is breathing with him really great. Are you going to con- are you going to conduct them? Uh, no, I will I will start with my own ensemble, you know, like a lot oh. of baroque conductors. I have Fantastic. my own ensemble. But uh, always um I I did a lot of album with my ensemble, but I I I thought that was good to work with many other groups too. And um and I really enjoy to to play with them. Uh, naturally, for inspiration for this, uh, uh, let's say this movie concert, it's um, uh, it's more in chamber music because there are like only six uh, um, instrumentalists. It's very chamber music. Uh, right. We had the chance also uh, to have the, the great lute player Thomas uh, Dunford, which is oh. a great, great, great player. And um, the idea of this, you know, when I when I uh, when we we started to have the first lockdown, I saw and I heard a, a, lo- a lot of videos of my colleagues uh, playing at home, of course, trying to to keep this contact with the audience. Yes, I, I have to say honestly, uh, maybe maybe because I'm a bit lazy, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did nothing, and uh, I I I try to. Um, to use this period like to to have a, to uh, to step back a little bit to to think about what i really wanted to do and of course after uh, more than 6 months uh, i was thinking about make probably doing something of better quality for image and for sound and we f- we thought about uh, particularly the nisi dominus by vivaldi because i think it's one of my it. Mm-hmm. I think uh, a lot of people they are still listening my Cum de Derit, for example, of the Nisi uh, Dominus I recorded like 15 years ago, but I had no videos of this Nisi Dominus, and we thought that we could uh, um, propose something with a high quality video, uh, with a, um, something uh, propose something intimate, also sacred. You know this Abbey of Royaumont. Uh, wait, 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 wait! Don't take away. In fact, in fa- it's, it, I, I, that's one of my pre. You, you're oh, stealing sorry. my line. It's fantastic. No, 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 no. We're going to go back. <laughs> no, no, it's fantastic. You, you, the, 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 the Abbe Royaumont. I actually was just there last weekend, uh, giving oh, classes on, there. on the repertoire of Gustave Mahler because Francis, Francis, for many reasons, but Francis, who runs the Royaumont, also yeah, runs now well, the, yeah. the, the, the Mahler Mediatek. The Mediate Gustave Mahler, who what belonged to Henri Louis de Lagrange, uh, and I knew Henri Louis for many many years and helped actually raise money for the Mediatek. So we're now uh-huh. melting this together. But I had never been to the Royaumont, and it is so unbelievably beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Where I am right now, I changed uh, browser windows. This is the this is the the website of Idajo. And, and when you go to it the first time, it'll probably be this that you will see and the new releases and so forth and so on. But if you go down here to the Global Concert Hall, you go to What's On, and you'll have all sorts of interesting things here. But uh, and upcoming concerts, and this is all lovely, and Luca and Maciej Pisakulski. But if you go on this button, Watch Now, these are the things that you actually can go now listen to. And this is the inspiration of Philip Jaruski. Uh, and and actually, I had something to do with this as well. My foundation uh, has a series with Adagio called Arts at Future, and we are showcasing young artists that have been involved in the Hugo Wolf Academy, which is about Hugo Wolf, the songs of Hugo Wolf, but also some Schubert. But we're going to click on this, and then we'll be back to the page that we started on. And this, and I think will be very nice, ladies and gentlemen, if we just listen to it a little bit. Let's have a listen for maybe a couple of minutes. Is that okay with you? First, you get yes, the birds. Yes. Such an extraordinary place. I'm not hearing. Are you hearing it? No, I'm not hearing it. Ah, I wonder if I put... I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to be so incompetent. That's very strange because I played it earlier and everything was fine. Ah, what about this? 
connected. No, no, I've completely. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'm actually quite good at technical things, but all right, try again. Yeah, you get to, you got a message from from Johan, I think. Ah, uh, Johan is ah, telling because me because you are using your headphones, headphones, me, Mike. Ah, that's probably no. why. It's gone to that. Excuse me very much. Hang on, just a minute. I can change that, and what I can do is get rid of that. You're great. Hopefully You're a will... great webmaster. I cannot do like this. <laughs> right. Boom. Now we go back to. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do this to me. Don't do this. To me. Okay. First of all, <laughs> this is very boring for people. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. There. Now we're back. All right. Shall we, shall we try one more time? Thank you, Johan. Yes. I'm sorry to be such an idiot. Here we are. We're going to go back here. We're oh. going to screen share. Hang on. Hang on. Now we have it. Oh, yes. It's a miracle. And this is Scarlatti. Scarlatti. Ah, thank you. It's a beautiful potato. I was waiting for some kind of cadence. And, uh -huh. and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if we go back to this splash page and we go to the Warner Classics and we go here and, you're, and you go into the menu, oh, that's not, that's that, that's that, sorry. If we go to uh, here and we hit releases, there's actually, they're quite generous with your, with your albums and things that you can actually, excerpts you can listen to, which is really quite fun. But if we stay on the Adonjo website and we go to your page, which uh, is, yeah, Ruski. Yes, double S. Ah, uh, double S, my bad, yeah, sorry. Find, you will there find, it. yeah, he's here. Right. I can't type for crap, but why is that happening? We want to go oh, to your that's site. that's you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> no, we don't know. We get enough of that. I don't know what that is. Never mind. Here we are. Come along. Here we are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see just a wonderful list. And one of the things that impressed me, oh, impressed me, but I saw that you have a couple of albums with Chichiri. Are, did you do duets with her? On There's a couple of places where she shows up on this. Have you been part of her projects and she part of your projects? Uh, maybe I can, I can tell you a funny story about that because, you know, uh, I was from the very beginning a, a big fan of Chichilia. And um, first time I met her, maybe it was... Or oh, let's say I was, I was 30 years old, like let's say 12 years ago, and uh, I got a prize, you know, Heisho Classic in in Germany. Yes. You probably got some, and uh, I was I was um, best singer of the year with her, and it was already very sur ah. surreal for me. And I was sick, and I I had to sing a, a popora aria, and during the rehearsal, some some somebody just touched me in the shoulder, 
and uh, she say hi Philippe it's Cecilia and I love your last album and I would stay to hear you at the rehearsal and then I was in panic of course <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she she said to me at the end that she will probably propose to a collaboration, and we did it. We did uh, Judo Cesare in Salzburg together. Ah, and yes, exactly. She invited me after to make some duets in Mission that we see now here, and uh, I invited her in my Popora album, and uh, we did Alcina also in Salzburg together, and uh, that's probably one of the most amazing gift. Uh, uh, when you admire yeah. some Agrippina. artists like her. Yeah, and I did Agrippina. And she's she's a wonderful human being. And, um, oh, she's a... And uh, she's, I, 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 uh, she's a dream. <laughs> yeah, she is yeah. a dream. I, I, I like to say, I mean... I, I knew her and sang with her before she was Cecilia Bartoli. She was starting in, in Zurich and we did Don Giovanni together. We did a lot of Barbara Seville's together. She, I agree with you. She just... And really unique and marvelous, wonderful singer yeah. and human being. So and I, she's I, a fantastic I, colleague, and she's saying hello to everybody, supporting everybody. Uh, she's always an, at two hundred percent during each rehearsal. Uh, she's yeah. very professional. She's a very hard worker. Uh, what I'm jealous about her, she's never tired. She's always singing, singing, <laughs> singing, and she say, "How can she do that?" And um, and we have a, yeah, and it's, you know what, the, be the best gift that she, she gave to me, that of course she's Cecilia, but she's also able to change the way she's singing to, to match with you. And that's, yeah, it's that's extraordinary. Amazing. It's extraordinary. And, um, yes, and it's, uh, it's, it's probably, you know, we probably will sing again uh, on the future. Um, and uh, um, there are some, Arias, sometimes it's difficult for me to to listen to someone else because musically she's so mm. uh I'm, I'm used to say that when she's singing i have the impression to hear a three dimensions voice you mm -hmm. know she's sculpting the sound mm -hmm. not in two but in three dimensions mm. and the text i think that she she gave something very special to the text i think there was of her singers there was one of her singer i i like very much of course is uh, Anne sophie von Auteur. Uh, you probably sang with her. A lot. Uh, which is amazing. Know, lot, but yes, we're very good friends. Uh, she's singing in French, in German, in English. You always have you always have the feeling this is her natural language, her born language. Yeah. And uh, that is pretty impressive also. And uh, you know, when I, I sang with Cecilia for the first time, this duo Cesare, uh, Anne Sophie von Otter was Cornelia. And uh -huh. Cecilia was Cleopatra. Then uh, you can oh, imagine God. my the way I was. <laughs> was <coming laughs> That's, look, Philip, I don't want to keep you much longer. But we'd, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we invited you to send in some questions. So I don't want to feel, I, I want to ask these questions because you wanted to ask Philip these questions. Choose and thank you for one. doing that. And, and, and in all of the times that I'm on, if you have questions, please write them into idata.com. Someone will send them to me and, and we can ask them. But here, here comes from Canada. For non-musicians like myself, conducting is a bit of a mystery. How oh, yes. are you preparing for your first conducting engagements that are coming soon? Wishing you luck with your new endeavor and looking forward to following this new turn in your career. But please keep singing. Yeah, you know, as a singer, sometimes, you know, maybe more for a baritone like you, you can sing longer for a concertino. I don't see myself singing as a concertino at 65. And, you know, it's it's a voice of youth. And um, I'm, I'm you very know, grateful that I can still sing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But you're and right. There's, I, a, there's a different longevity. I can imagine that. Yes, and I think, you know, um, I was playing music before and I the most important thing for me is to do music. And it's true that I have my yes. own ensemble for more than 15 years. Fantastic. And of course, until now, I never conduct like mm -hmm. physically. But of course, I yeah. already, already conduct like uh, uh, real souls, uh, giving artists, you know, doing the artistical, artistic direction of my group. Then I have a lot of ideas. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, you know, sometimes I, I, I like to, to find new music, new scores. 
And sometimes uh, I, I just choose one area, but sometimes I, I, I would like to propose to the audience the entire opera. Uh, and then this is probably right. one of my motivation to become a conductor is to get the opportunity to make big, big projects, uh, choose the singers I want to work with. Um, but um, how I work, um, I know that I have also to learn how to, to transmit my ideas with my body. And it's not that easy. And uh, probably uh, uh, I, I need to, to train on that. Um, I, I can imagine when the first day I will go in the pit and, and conduct the, the four, my first opera for four hours. It, it, it probably very, very scary because you are, uh, you have to in, uh, imagine there is a singer is just forgetting his text or not or <laughs> slowing down because you know that all the singers are slowing down on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can imagine that that's something very, very, very tiring. And um, maybe I, I don't know if I would become a conductor, you know, I, I want to become a conductor, but you know, I can project myself. Well, see, maybe maybe you'll go back to the violin. I think starting on the violin, of course, piano, you're, you're, a, you're a step ahead. This is very good. You already know the sonorities and the, and the, and the possibilities of string instruments. You'll be fine. Let's, look, you have two questions that are the same question, really. After the COVID crisis passes, and by the way, I completely identify, I, I, somewhere in the end of March, um, I said, look, this is my COVID sabbatical. That's it. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And that's why I jumped into the Adagio thing, because I had absolutely no real motivation to sing. I, what I, would, I, I liked and looked at music and a lot of, I don't know about you, but a lot of, for me, for studying music is not actually singing, but just looking and studying music and, and, and hearing it in, in your head. I mean, that's a good way to, to, keep your, to keep your voice quiet. But I don't know, there was just something in this crisis that said, I need to do something else. I need to think about something else. I need to listen, read, so forth and so on. So I, I get. It. So if there is a post-COVID soon, uh, this one is from, this question is from America. Will you come to the U.S. again? And then there's another same question from Ireland. So I guess you, you're going to be flying around a lot again. <laughs> yes. Will you come to Ireland? Will you come to America? Will you tour again? Oh, yes, I will tour. Uh, unfortunately, I had to cancel a big tour in South America this year, yeah. uh, in Asia too. Um, I know that I come back. I think next year I will come back for a few concerts in Canada with my my best friend, Marie-Nicole Lemieux, the, the Canadian contralto. We will do some concerts together. Uh, but it's true, I'm not going offensively to, to America. And, um, you know, I, I did, um, I did uh, three, three concerts uh, last year <laughs> between March and, and December. Uh, I exactly. did uh, the Viva and Exactly. Honestly, honestly, I have to say that finally, us artists, we are a bit... Uh, narcissic. I just realized when I sing on stage, I just sing better. <laughs> and uh, it's, I've, I think it's, it's just because you are on stage, you know, your, your nature is to, to be on stage and, and to give some, to have a connection with. And uh, it's true that I realized that even if I'm studying well, and just to, to be also with other musicians, because you never do music alone. And, and I, that, this is what I miss. This is what I miss. I miss yes. the conversation of orchestras. I miss the com I've done three three recitals in the last, you know, nine months or eight months, and and you know, yeah. Anyway, all right, and, we're not going to go there. And, but this this, 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 this is a wonderful question. You'll love this. Yes. This is from. I'm, I'm going to say her name because I, this. The, you'll see why. This is from Ivana Canul in Mexico. What advice would you give to young musicians that want to dedicate themselves to early and Baroque music? Question mark. I loved inspiration, especially Scarlatti's oratorio. You really inspire me. One day I will play or sing with you. So you must write cool. her name. Cool. Oh, uh, you know, I have, um, I created like three, three years ago, uh, my own academy. And um, we, have, we have children, they are learning um, violin, piano, 
and cello for free. And I have also Fantastic. young talents. And uh, each year I choose five singers and we work together. Then finally now I can give more good advices. I think that in the past, because I never teach before. And um, first it's, what is difficult is probably about Baroque music. You know, sometimes we have a, a bad idea about Baroque music. Uh, probably I had a bad idea when I, I started to sing. I think the technique you need to sing Baroque music is not that different than to sing Verdi or Schubert or Mozart. You really need to I be agree. focused on how do you produce the sound. And you know, when my first uh, students, they came, they, they thought that I will give them just uh, courses about the style. But I was giving courses about breathing, uh, positions, and sensations. And they were really surprised first. And uh, when they just realized that I could give good advices, they, they followed me. But, um, you know, even me, sometimes I lose a lot of time when I, I was young because I, I thought that I knew how to sing. And I remember that the first years, I was very tired uh, because I didn't mm. know how to sing, you know, it was too mm. early. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. when you do Baroque music, sometimes I, we say that at the beginning, you start with a lot of big coloratura arias, you do it, but you don't know really how you do it. And, and right. after, after two, three years, I got troubles. And uh, I had to rebuild everything because I, I was too tense. Uh, yeah. And of course, uh, you know that singing is not to be relaxed because if you're too relaxed, you don't sing. No, that's never. Then Balanced. My advice, Balanced. yeah, yeah. My my advice would be really to to find a good vocal teacher first. <laughs> uh, and this is not that easy sometimes. This is a good vocal teacher for you. But, um, you know, the good sign, I always say, when you arrive tired at, uh, at a, a course of a teacher and two hours after, you're not tired anymore. This is a good sign. <laughs> if you arrive and you're not tired and after two hours, you cannot sing anymore. Exactly. It's probably not a good teacher for you. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful piece of advice. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a wonderful simple. conversation. You've been incredibly generous with your time, Philippe. I'm so grateful. Oh, my pleasure. Everyone, go to idandro.com and just drop your needle wherever you want on Philippe Jaruski, his recordings. It is wonderful. And do not forget, his expressiveness is irresistible, as much as you are in person. And go to Thomas Armson also, because I'm no, sure. No, 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 no. They've they been there, done that. <laughs> go to your Jaruski. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, it's wonderful to meet you. I do hope our paths cross. It would be extraordinary. Yeah, and let's stay optimistic. I'm sure we will we will pass this crisis and we yes. will find our we'll find our audience again and do music. We will. Great. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much thank for joining us everybody. tonight. Thursday with Thomas, Philip Jaruski. It's wonderful. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Hang on, bye Philip. Bye. We'll talk,